Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here. Hope everyone's doing well out there. Hope you guys had a great weekend. Kind of sorry that the weekend is over with. Today's Sunday. Tomorrow's back to the nitty gritty. But anyways, um, back to the Kramer guitar. And I was working on it a little bit last night, talking on Skype with a few of my friends, and uh, kind of came across some problems with the Kramer body, which is not a good thing and looked up online to confirm of what i was finding and uh yeah um we got some problems with the plywood kramer body so here's a plastic bag that i've been keeping the body in overnight because i kind of exposed it a little bit and uh not a good thing so mold okay you all know how mold works and and uh, what happens when things are stored in damp areas or uh, especially wood and this guitar has been stored in a damp area like I said uh, uh, I, well, I don't know if I said it now Wally ended up having this guitar I guess uh, in his basement and um, well if you don't have a finished basement and the proper ventilation and everything else inside their basements can be damp and it's not the fault of uh, anybody actually it's just the way it is and you kind of never really uh think about it because you know it's in the basement and you don't really do much you know it's not like a living area where you're constantly down in the basement like i am and uh you know something that you work on or so it's not really wally's fault that that this happened you know it's just it's an old guitar and number one it's made out of plywood it's not a solid body guitar number one so you know that's it's got gaps holes pores and everything else inside of it that are much more than what a solid wood would be it's plywood you know there's not much you could do about it. it's plywood now I was doing some work on this thing, shooting this shit with some friends on Skype, and I started to pull out the inserts for the Floyd Rose. Now, they came out pretty easily, all right? They were wiggling around inside there, inside the holes. He said something about them being, you know, kind of angled forward a little bit, and they were. And uh, so I ended up drilling them out in steps and putting some down. Now, this is a half inch half inch piece of dowel rod and this is not the exact one that I used the exact one that I used is this one here which is oak and uh, you know pretty hard stuff so what I ended up doing now as you can see here I don't know if I can turn it or not but there is a difference here in size all right so this is much bigger than what that insert is so I went in steps to drill out these holes. I made a template so I know exactly where the inserts have to go back in when I drill them out. And as I was drilling this out in steps, now I noticed when I pulled these out, it was black in the hole. All right, I mean, it was, it was black, black. Got my flashlight, looked inside of it, and kind of like was, okay, um, something's not right here. So when I ended up going further steps with the drill, now the drill went into the wood pretty easily. And, uh, you know, I was like, oh, well, they're new drills, they're sharp, and, and you know, they're just gonna plow right in there without any problems. Uh, when it came out, I could take the powder and compress it and make like a ball out of it. Okay, that's moisture. Um, as I was going, the steps further with the drill bit the wood started turning more of a dark dark brown it's plywood all right plywood's not dark dark brown now if it was burning i'd say yeah but so i started looking at this thing a little bit more closely and uh you know when i started disassembling i didn't think about certain things uh because it's not something that that you really think about when you're working on guitars and stuff but I don't know if you could see inside of the cavity over here very well. Let me put a little light on it. Maybe you can see it better if it doesn't blind you guys. Inside that cavity, it's a little bit black. 
right over here. Uh, there's a little bit going on in this one, not so much in this one. Uh, right over here, on the inside here, up against this wall, you probably see it a lot better this way. See the black. Now, what I ended up doing is, because of the cracking on this body, and this ledge right here was kind of folded in a little bit. It's a little bit of a lip. So what I ended up doing is I've got the wood glue, and I've got my CA glues. i got the thin and the thick, and then I have the activator here. So what I did is I brushed the CA glue on over here, clamped it, and then hit it with the activator. And that's why it looks kind of white over here as well. Uh, that locked that piece of wood in place it ain't going nowhere now and then I took and I brushed CA glue all the way around all these cavities and stuff not thinking that I'm sealing in mold so I started looking at it over here really bad um, I used the CA glue kind of a trick that I saw online now with some of these cracking cracks that were going on around here, uh, I could see like how far they're going into the, the wood through the hole over here. See, it's like this black over here. I don't know if that's mold or if that's wood. So if I scrape it, it's wood. it cleans up a little bit I gotta wash my hands after I get done but anyways uh, I took the smallest shim that I could find and in, in the, the widest cracks that I could find on this body and kind of stuck it inside there to see if you know if it's gonna go inside the wood or, or if it's just a finished crack so they seem like they were finished cracks but I took CA glue and went all the way around this whole chamber over here just in case because some of these lines inside here that look like a crack kind of matched up with this over here and it ain't going nowhere you know and the cracks are filled so there's no my nail doesn't go under it and there's cracks all the way around here these two holes over here and as you can kind of see one of them is is really black on the inside compared to the other one now one the bottom one over here I believe is the one that I took the screw out of that screw it's pretty long to begin with and um, let's see where is it where are those screws at all right just to give you an idea of the moisture content that is in this wood This is the screw that is part of the, um, the strap lock, okay? As you can see, this is all rusted. Let me see if I can do it this way. It's all rusted, and the tip is like black a little bit, but it's all rusted going all the way up. Now, when I started to loosen these up to back them out of the body, uh, it was like a few threads that were in the wood and the rest of it just pulled out. Same thing with the one that was on the horn as well. It was the same way. So that's the bad news about this all right and i don't think i mean you guys tell me because you guys some of you guys have been around guitar stuff a lot longer than i have um i don't think this is going to be savable i glued in the oak uh dowel rods in here they're inside there sat overnight um but i'm worried that give this guitar another few years and it's going to end up snapping in half the body because of the mold is eating the inside of it so i don't know i mean this is kind of a territory that i have not gotten myself into now it looks kind of messy because of all the the glue that i put over here but that's to seal up you know all these edges and to make sure like there's a crack over here make sure that crack is sealed and the CA glue works really well with that the uh, tight bond is kind of a thicker thicker glue so it really won't get down in there as much as I would like it to like the CA glue thin would get in there 
So you guys tell me, is this going to be something that is savable without having to dip it into some solution to kill the mold that's growing on the inside of it? I've seen mold on outside surfaces before, but never seen mold inside of wood like this. And from what I looked up online, um, mold can penetrate inside of plywood and start eating it from the inside out. So that's the bad news about this. The good news about this is, is that I found a body for them. And it is the same cutouts as far as the, uh, the pickups. I don't know what body this is. And the other body that I found is got me a little bit more of sharper lines going around the edges, but pretty much the same thing as exact same thing as this one here. So I bought it. You know, Wally sent me um, sent me a couple bucks uh, to do the job, and I told him I'm using the money to get parts and stuff for the job, and uh, that's exactly what I did. So I ended up uh, picking up this body here, and. As you can see, the edge is a little bit more sharper, but it's the same thing. So what I'm going to do is, once that body comes in, I will compare the two bodies together, put the neck on it, measure for the, uh, uh, you know, the length, the guitar length that it's supposed to be, and start to build from there. Meanwhile, this body here is going back inside of its plastic bag. Um, yeah, it's kind of a bad thing, but if I ended up if I ended up doing this build and not saying anything about the mold, and say two years later this guitar crumbles because the mold content inside of it just took over and and ate all the fucking wood um i'd be the one who'd be probably at fault with this because i didn't warn or say anything about what was going on with this body and i feel kind of bad for him because uh he loves this guitar i don't know if this is one of his first guitars that he ever had he's had it for a long time uh so i feel kind of bad for him about that and the new body should make up for it now the headstock is done as far as that goes i just have to wait for a decal decal and i can go ahead and finish the whole neck um i got the frets already one of the cool things about this is it's got the stock pickups for the bridge or for the neck and the middle but the center pickup or the god i'm getting all confused the bridge pickup is a made in USA EMG 81 it's only a two wire plus the hot wire for the power for this thing now this thing had a, a three-way toggle switch right over here and uh, right next to the the five-way switch the new body has the same thing with it and comes with uh, some of the you know the controls of it which I'm not going to use that so I'm going to be replaced but the three-way switch that was part of this uh, next to the five-way switch was disconnected and so I looked up online the schematics for this thing and it goes it shows that the uh, you had two single coils you had a humbucker that was a uh, four wire or five wire humbucker uh, it went to this three-way switch over here and you were able to split it or uh, change the polarity of it and giving you a little bit more options well with the emg pickup that is inside this thing um that switch was disconnected it wasn't even connected to anything so that switch is obsolete so what i'm going to end up probably doing is plugging this hole and on the next body or even this body if someone could tell me if the mold is not a big deal on this thing which i kind of think it is um but I'm probably going to plug that hole up, and that way that switch is going to be completely gone. But everything else will be the same way with the five-way switch, the two tones into one volume. So, yeah. All right. So that's that. Sorry, it's kind of some bad news, but luckily I was able to find a body. And uh, you won't believe some of the prices that uh, these idiots want for, well, I, maybe I can't call them idiots. Maybe they are smart because uh, wood prices have gone up and um, 
you know, to make something like this, you got to have the right tools and stuff, but to buy it already pre-made, all you got to do is refinish it is kind of a smart way to go instead of having to make it yourself. But anyways, um, yeah, some of these guys with their pricing is crazy. You know, there's some people that want, uh, you know, $800 for a body for, you know, a Kramer body. And, uh, but they're not uh, Pollywood, plywood, Pollywood. Hollywood. Yeah, no, plywood. All right, so, so that's my story. I'm sticking to it. There's not much I could say or do for right now as far as uh, doing too much of anything. Um, the frets came for the guitar. Now, I measured off of the old frets, and um, the old frets were pretty much worn out. So when I put the new frets next to a old fret, um, it just didn't look right. So I ended up reordering some new frets, and uh, once those come in, I'll start working on the neck. Once the decal comes in, I'll get the, everything clear-coated for that, and it'll be done. So we're still going with the hot pink, and uh, or fluorescent pink. I know, it looks weird. It doesn't look like fluorescent pink. Now, this doesn't have a clear coat on it, so it looks different from the body, but when you look at them both on the camera, um, it almost looks like a, a, a dark, uh, an orange or, or, or a red, you know, something like that. It's, it's weird. But no, it's, it's fluorescent pink. Even the cap on the bottle of the paint still have, gives it like a weird, you know, color on the camera. Might be the lighting issue. I don't know. Anyways, you guys take it easy. Have a good one. And uh, sorry, Wally, but uh, I will get this thing going and I will get it done right. Thanks for watching, guys.